One of my big hobbies in life is photography, and that means I like cameras and lighting and all kinds of gear, and there's all kinds of videos on YouTube of what's in my camera bag. Me, as a musician, took the line straight to me practicing, me playing, and all the gadgets that I carry around with me every single day. So that's why today, we're gonna be talking about what's in my camera bag. There's a lot of stuff for us to go through in this. Maybe you'll find a gadget that you want to put in your practice bag. Now we're gonna start with this bag. For the longest time, I was just carrying around all of my stuff in just a little drawstring bag with holes in it and with all the books, all the mouthpieces, all the pencils, everything. It just didn't work. So about three or four years ago, I upgraded to this bag and it just changed my life. It honestly did not help my addiction of just carrying all my things with me, which is a really bad problem that I wouldn't recommend. But you will notice that in this bag, I feel like I'm ready for anything. So if you need something, I will probably have it on this bag. But it is the Ravuo messenger bag. It's like the top best choice on Amazon and that's why I bought it. Lots of pockets and that's kind of what you need it for. We'll go through the main stuff first, all the books that I have and everything. This isn't gonna be a book analysis video. I'm sure I'll do one of those later, but for now I'm just kind of explaining the books that I carry around with me. Now I have the Phil Snedecore Low Etudes book for tuba. I did this all four years in my undergrad and I still carry around this Lower Etudes book, which is his second book in the series. Fantastic for any tuba player really wanting to get better at pedal tones. All of these will give you all the experience you need. It is a lot of low playing, which is a lot of fun for me. Then I actually have a Christmas present that's next. This is box six suites all just wrapped up into one. My professor told me that this would be a good thing for me to have just out written and everything and accessible for teaching and playing. This is just an example of just different odds and ends. This is from last semester. I was working pretty hard on the Vaughn Williams and it's still in my bag. I should probably clean that up. Then I have a couple little routine books that I like to go through. This is the Vining Daily Routine Second Edition. Fantastic book for just daily warm up routines, gets you stepping through all kinds of really important stuff for tuba playing, but it is more advanced. I would recommend his student edition if you're a younger tuba player wanting a good solid daily routine. Then I have the Gregoria 50 Etudes book. Now I don't have too much experience in this, but it is the kind of etude that you can kind of pick up and you can work on your tonal development, your lyricism and everything. And so I'll pick it up, work on some stuff every now and then, try to make music. That's the point of this book. And then the big thing in the big pocket is my iPad. And now this has completely changed my life. I have it in this sleeve, not really anything special, but I really like this case because what I can carry in it is a pencil, a pen at all times, my stylus, and my mouthpiece rim, which is just really good for buzzing. <laughs> I really use this tool so much and that's why I keep it in my iPad instead of just in the case because I have this with me more often. So if I ever want to work on my buzzing, I can just pull it out and buzz it. It's flat. It's very portable. It's really nice. So as far as this case is concerned, having this pocket in the front is huge. Inside of it, I have my iPad and then this is the Apple Magic Keyboard, which I really love. It's kind of annoying to take it off and on every time I want to put my iPad on my stand, but being able to just take it, connect it to there and not have to worry about it falling out is very helpful. So that's the big pocket. Now the iPad has minimized what I usually have in this by a ton. Used to, I would have so many books in here and that was the big reason that my old bag was just falling apart because all 20 or however many books, all the books I ever need are pretty much on this. Now all the books aside, I think we're getting to the fun stuff, the fun part of the bag. What else do I use in this? So we're gonna start with this side pocket and and this is just some quick, simple stuff. Pencil, yeah, always need a pencil. What else in this pocket is valve oil. Now I use this Venture Premium valve oil. I know some people are picky with valve oil. I'm really not that kind of guy. If it oils my valves, we're good. And then also in this, I have some slide grease. If you notice in some of my videos, I really have gotten in the habit, which is a good habit to be in, of moving my first valve slide to fix my tuning. I need to be better about that. I should be moving even more slides, but you know, progress is progress. 
process and every now and then it sticks you got to put this back on get it sliding smooth and everything then we'll go to these front pockets now this is a really fun one I don't really even know what this is called off the top of my head it's a six liter bag that's really useful to kind of monitoring where you're at breathing wise a lot of the times I'll use it to get my day going get my breathing going in the morning me using it kind of looks like this And the idea is to get it as full as possible and empty it out as much as possible as well. But that's pretty hard to do. I know some people are better at it than me, but this is just a tool to kind of get you going in the morning and really kind of physically say, hey, this is how much air I'm breathing in and breathing out. Along with the blow bag or whatever you want to call that, this is my go-to tuner. It's a Korg orchestral tuner. This was actually recommended to me by Derek Finstermacher, a really great tuba player I had the privilege of taking a lesson with when I got my undergrad. And he said, hey, Hey, if you're serious about getting better at tuning, you should have one of these. And the reason that I like it, you can clip it onto your bell with this clip and it gets it right there. I know a lot of the times with the iPhone, I feel like, oh, it's picking up this other noise. So I still do use the iPhone when I don't have access to this, but this is really great to say the pitch that I'm seeing here is what you're getting. All right, those are the front pockets. Now we'll go into the mouthpiece pocket, which I think is probably a lot of people's favorites. Of course, we have another pencil. This mouthpiece pouch, which I like wearing flannels, so I'm pretty sure my parents got me this several years ago. I just have a Lasky 30G. I'm in the middle on my main C tuba of changing mouthpieces, not really sure what I'm doing with it. So I'm not playing this one as much as I used to be. It's a really solid mouthpiece though. Now along with that, we have some funky mouthpieces. That's the the only regular mouthpiece that I have in this. This clear plastic mouthpiece, which is really good for monitoring what your embouchure is doing while you're playing. So if I'm in front of a mirror practicing or maybe in front of a camera, I can buzz on this and I can see everything that's going on. I don't use it a lot, but it's a good tool and it's a good educational tool for anybody who needs to kind of see what another person's embouchure is doing. And then this is a really fun one. This is my cutaway mouthpiece and I bought this mouthpiece as a regular, I think it's a, yeah, Hellenberg mouthpiece, just completely standard for like dirt cheap on eBay. I sent it over to my friend who has tools that he can use and he cut it for me. So it does look kind of janky, but I think it adds to the character that way and it does what it needs to do you can put it in your horn and you can buzz and it basically does what this rim visualizer does no resistance nothing to worry about which is a great way to practice your buzzing but you get to plug it into the tuba and feel what it's like to hold the tuba while you're doing this exercise so I like it it's helped me a lot as far as embouchures and I've been making several embouchure changes it was also just really fun to be able to send it to my friend have him make it and I I just thought that was kind of silly. Now we're on to the big pocket, the last pocket. Oh, there's several things. This is a tuba bell cover, which we've had to have at school because of all the you know, pandemic stuff. But you know, I don't carry it around with me very much, but it was in there, so I figured I'd show it around. Along with that, we have a homemade mask with a hole in it, so you can put your mouthpiece through it, which is interesting. And then a little bit better of a mask for playing with a flap, so you can put the mouthpiece through it and then close the flap around it. These masks and covers were kind of moving away from and I'm very thankful for because they're difficult to play with. After that we have the Zoom H6 I think is what this is. Really great because sometimes you want to record yourself, hear how you sound, but you don't want to do it on an iPhone. A lot of the times I record myself on an iPhone and I'm just like what? I sound so bad. But then I record myself on this and I'm like, okay, I don't sound as bad. So this is a nice tool to get a good solid sound on the tuba and it's so portable. As long as I have some headphones with an auxiliary jack, I can just plug it in, hear it really nice. There are onboard speakers, but I feel like that just takes away the whole purpose of using a nice microphone. And then we have a Dr. Beat. If you have a band director or a teacher, I'm sure you've seen this before. Dr. Beats are all over the place. I just recently got 
this one last summer and I use it all the time. I've always been a metronome person. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I really stress the metronome and I've always liked having a separate metronome than whatever's on my phone because I just feel like it lets me use it more. Even before this, I had a little boxy metronome that was really small that I'd throw in my bag. So this is really nice because it has several more features than just that little standard one I did. And it's got this nice little stand. So if I'm sitting next to a table or next to a piano, I just set it up. I don't have to worry about it. And I just get it going pretty much all of my practice session. Now, the last thing in my bag is probably the most unique. And I would be surprised if you've ever seen anybody else do this, but it's a tip that my director gave me. It's actually a hockey puck. It's several hockey pucks. I put this on the seat where my tuba is gonna sit. So it will sit exactly where I need it to. So I don't have to slouch or stretch for the mouthpiece. And that's really important because as a tuba player, you need to be able to take big breaths. And if you're sitting like this, or you're sitting like this, your lungs are gonna be contracted and used in a way where your diaphragm can't do what it's supposed to do. So for me personally, I'd use one for my C tuba. I put it right under there. And then I put two for my F tuba and it just makes it to where that goes right to my face, no stretching necessary. And it has really helped my playing. I feel like I get a better grip on the tuba as well. I would highly recommend using hockey pucks if you think that would help. That is all that I have in my practice bag. I really hope you enjoyed this video and maybe you learned something. Comment down below any questions you have or maybe suggestions for things that I should add to my practice bag. Thank you guys for watching this video. Go make life musical and I'll see you in the next one.